The U.S. escalated tensions yet again with Russia. This is the Associated Press. They said, breaking, United States expels 60 Russian diplomats, orders Seattle consulate shuttered in response to U.K. spy case. So, for those of you who don't know the backstory here, um, there are allegations that Russia poisoned, I think it was a spy, um, in the U.K. And... It's interesting because in response to those allegations, Theresa May made this big thing in Parliament. But the response from Russia was, okay, at the UN level, well, let's open an investigation. Open an investigation, and then let's find out exactly what's going on here. Uh, so the US and everybody else said, no, no investigation, but we're going to say you did it for sure. We know you did it. And then they're reacting like this, where they say, no investigation. Let's not get more information on it. Let's just say it was definitely you, uh, and you're guilty, and then here's a clear way that we're going to escalate further. Let's, like I said, expel 60 Russian diplomats, shut down a consulate uh, uh, in response to this. And of course, the UK is, is doing, uh, you know, are taking similar actions. So, you would think that the media coverage of this would be like, whoa, 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 what's going on here? So we're going to escalate further again with Russia and we're not, we're going to be cool with not having an investigation into what happened. And we're just kind of, kind of, uh, blindly go down this dangerous path. You would think that that would be the response. That's not the response. Uh, we'll take a look at what the response is. And this is from Fox News of all places. Look at how this is framed. Uh, that the White House, it, if we've been tough on anybody, uh, it's not Russia. Now with these expulsions, uh, the strong words of Raj Shaw and others, uh, is it time for a narrative change there? Has the United States made the push that it needs to toward the Russians? Or do we still need to hear from the president, a man from whom we have not heard criticism yet? Well, um, that's like I said earlier, and you mentioned prior to the break, uh, the, it's very interesting to see how the White House is reacting to this and the way that they're announcing it. Uh, the president didn't go ahead and say this himself. He used the press secretary, Sarah Sanders, to issue out an emailed statement regarding that they'd be taking this action. Um, and as my colleague Jonathan Swan reported earlier today, as we've been seeing, the president has a hard line on Russia, a hard red line, and that's Vladimir Putin. He won't go out and say directly to criticize Vladimir Putin himself, but he'll do so in an administrative way. And, um, you know, as we're seeing these actions, them ramp up these actions, it's going to get a lot harder for him to not personally attack Vladimir Putin, but do it administratively so. Elena Treen of Axios. Good. So do you understand what they said there? They're going, oh, okay, so we expelled all these Russian diplomats and we uh, are refusing an investigation into what happened in the UK and we're closing the consulate in Seattle. But have you heard Donald Trump say anything about this? I, he hasn't come out there and said anything. He hasn't personally called out Vladimir Putin in Russia. What's he hiding? And then they're saying, well, it's going to be harder. The more of an escalation there is, it's going to be harder for Trump to continue to not uh, call out Putin directly. So what they're saying is, forget the policy, forget the fact that this is a clear escalation and this is a hard line response. Ignore that. They're still weak and Donald Trump is still weak on Vladimir Putin because he hasn't said anything. You know, a while ago I joked that uh, Democrats and the mainstream media will be calling Donald Trump a Putin puppet as our missiles are in the air to strike them and their missiles are in the air to strike us. Now I don't think that's so much of a joke. I think that's kind of true. So Glenn Greenwald responded to this. He said, um, one, other than bombing Moscow, is there anything Trump could do to make people rescind the he's a Kremlin puppet line? Would bombing Moscow even work? Two, who will be the first to say Putin told him to do this to hide the plot? Three, can't Putin use the PP tape to stop this? So yeah, what happened? They were saying all along, oh my God, Vladimir Putin has compromat, uh, a word nobody used until fucking like a year ago. Uh, Vladimir Putin has compromat on Donald Trump so he can get whatever he wants from Donald Trump. Well, that's interesting. Donald Trump just expelled, the U.S. government just expelled all these Russian diplomats, shut down the consulate, escalated even further. And uh, they're doing it, and there's no response from the Kremlin. 
It's almost like he doesn't have so-called compromat on Donald Trump. And then that is true. I've noticed this time and time again, what Greenwald points out here, that any time Donald Trump does something that's a clear escalation with Russia, instead of resisting that, which is what they should do, you should resist this hawkish bullshit, uh, the Democrats go and mainstream media goes, well, he's just doing this to hide the fact that they're in bed together. So notice the way that works. It's a non-falsifiable claim then. You say, Donald Trump is Vladimir Putin's puppet, and then that's not falsifiable. Because any time he does something that's a clear escalation with Russia, that's clearly against Vladimir Putin's interest, they go, oh, sure, he's only doing that to hide the fact that they're really in bed together. So then there's nothing that he could do that would disprove that fact to you. There's nothing he could do. Just It's a matter, it's a... It's, it's an axiom at this point. Sorry, it, it, it just, it is what it is. It's a law of nature, a physical law of nature that Donald Trump is Vladimir Putin's puppet. So when Donald Trump, for example, routinely bombs uh, the Syrian government and Syrian aligned forces, even though that's Putin's top ally, uh, somehow that uh, proves that he's Vladimir Putin's puppet because he's bombing one of his top allies. When uh, Donald Trump lays another round of sanctions on uh, Putin over the Crimea issue, somehow that proves that he's uh, Vladimir Putin's puppet, even though he's doing sanctions that Putin doesn't want him to do, because something, something, there were these other sanctions that he didn't implement, so therefore, obviously, he's, uh, he's a Kremlin puppet. So you see the way this game is played? Forget the NATO buildup on Russia's border, which is a clear escalation from, uh, you know, the international community and the United States. Forget the fact that U.S., uh, warships are now in the Black Sea right on Russia's border. Forget the fact that we're expelling their fucking diplomats and we're escalating towards World War III. Forget all that. Somehow Donald Trump is still Vladimir Putin's puppet. And you see now why I, I'm getting driven crazy over this issue. You know, I heard from friends on this who I don't think they were necessarily with me every step of the way w w with my take on the Russia thing, but then now they're starting to see it. Now they're starting to see it, where, you know, you see the breaking news report from the AP that says, oh my god, the U.S. expels 60 Russian diplomats and orders the consulate in Seattle shut. And then, you know, it's like, there's no way anybody with a brain who cares about reality can look at that and then go, Putin puppet. So that's the scary thing, is that now you've also made it so that assuming Donald Trump does something to de-escalate, let's say. If Trump and the U.S. government does something to de-escalate, that would be viewed as the smoking gun that he's definitely Putin's puppet. So in other words, if Trump does the right thing, if Trump does the, the politically accurate thing, which is better for everybody in the country if we de-escalate with Russia and don't continue to go down this dangerous path, then that's viewed as negative by the Democrats and the mainstream media. So that's the problem, and this is something Michael Tracy's been pointing out for a long time. Now, if, if we actually do get to some sort of peace with Russia, that's viewed as obviously he's Putin's puppet. But if he does the opposite and he continues to escalate with Russia, as he's doing now, he's still called Putin's puppet. Because, oh, forget about the policy. Did he say anything? He didn't say anything. Well, you know, hey man, you could fucking bomb Russia if you want, but if you're not going out there and wagging your finger at Putin, I think you're his puppet. So this is cheerleading for a more hawkish action, which is what drives me fucking crazy is that this is the resistance, and this is the mainstream media, this is all they do. Stormy Daniels, Stormy Daniels, Stormy Daniels, Russia, 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 and my favorite one, there's high turnover in the administration. Wow! <laughs> On the list of shit Trump's done that drives me fucking crazy, that I say he's destroying the country, that's like number 1,312, high turnover in the administration. Could you imagine if Bernie's elected and he has high turnover in his administration? How many fucks would you give? You'd be like, I don't give a shit. Who cares? So what? He fired a lot of people and he's hiring a bunch of new people. I don't care. But with Trump, his feud is like, ooh, let's take the shittiest argument imaginable and use that against Trump and then help him in the process because we're using the shittiest arguments imaginable so that when Trump turns around and goes fake news, everybody goes, yeah, it's kind of true because look at the shit they're talking about. So this drives me crazy. This, you know, it, it proves yet again to me that everybody's brain is broken in response to Donald Trump getting elected. And um, it's dangerous. It's dangerous because it used to be the case that when we had the original Red Scare, there was about half the country was against it. 
Every, all the people on the left were like, whoa, what, really? Seriously? You're gonna do this fucking red-baiting McCarthyism where you accuse people of being communists simply because they don't go totally along with the establishment? Well, now, you know, the, the Republican side of the spectrum, I mean, forget it. Listen to John McCain and Lindsey Graham. No matter what, they cheerlead for escalation with Russia. No matter what. So you have the Republicans cheerleading for an escalation with Russia. Now you have the Democrats, same thing. And then when... Trump does escalate with Russia, the Democrats still turn around and go, you weren't escalating enough. You should do the sanctions and then also come out and shit on him and wag your finger at him in a press conference or something. So this is, this is resisting from the right and this is incredibly dangerous.